and hello once again. So, in this video we're going to learn how to make ourselves a little random dice program like this. I guarantee you that first dice is always going to be two. And you'll see why. So if I hit play again, build successful. It was two and one, let's do it again, build successful, two and four. So you see that bottom one will change, but that top one is always going to stay the same even though it's supposedly random. So, now that we have that out of the way, let's go and make that. So, oops, and let's actually go and click the, in my actual real cheat sheet here so I actually know what I'm looking at. <laughs> so, as always, we're going to get rid of all this stuff in between main. However, before we do this, before we start typing, I need to include something else here, okay? I'm going to include time.h, okay? And uh, you know what? I think I'll only need time.h, but just in case, just in case, I'm going to come back to that, put a little pin on that just to see if there's an error because I'm using some I'm using some uh, stuff here that might be a little bit different depending on how it interprets time but basically yes I have basically now said that I'm going to include time I'm going to include the function of time so as always let's just introduce people to the game so see out you know welcome to the random dice game and slash n slash n Boop. so we're gonna have a few things we're gonna have an int dice one okay we're gonna have an int dice one we're also gonna have an int dice two okay and that sort of stuff so we know we're going to have two dice. In dice one, dice two. Nice, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So the first dice, let's just start that out here. We should know how to do C outs by now. I shouldn't have to keep type saying every single word I do. First dice is, is the rand dice. So what is rand? Rand is random, okay? Random. So, I'm going to literally make this dice be random. So, there are six sides of a dice, right? So, whatever it is, you're going to wind up somehow getting six sides of a dice. So, and no, we're not doing Dungeons and Dragons. We're not doing a D8, a D20, and all that sort of fun stuff. So, I'm just going to say that dice 1 is now equal to... And here's where we're going to get some randomness in here, okay? So, rand. So, and you're probably wondering why I put parentheses around this. It's because I'm going to do rand modular division 6. So, my options are going to be either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? But, I don't want 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, because who has ever heard of a 0 on a dice block? So, I'm going to just do a plus 1. So, now I get, you know... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, okay? So, I understand right there that doesn't make a lot of sense to you right now. Basically, I used modular division. What is modular division? So, if you know how you have, you know, say, uh, 3 divided by 2, you know, it doesn't actually go in perfectly clean. You have, it goes in once, and then there's one remainder. And, of course, you go on and go on, and it eventually becomes 1.5 or whatever. Well, what modular division, that little percent symbol, does not do that. Just whatever is in that decimal point, whatever's in the remainder, is what it gives you. So whatever random number it picks, we're going to modular division it by 6. So we will always get some sort of division of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 0. But I don't want that zero, so I want a plus one to make it one, two, three, four, and five, or six. 
And this is also basically the same way that ranges work inside strings. So for example, if I were to have a string that says, you know, hello, just because you think that just because there's five letters that the range is five, no, the range is actually four. Because you go from zero, one, two, three, four. So the H is right there, the E is there, the L is there, the second L is there, and the O is there. It's the same way with involving any sort of string, okay? Zero is always your starting point. So the first letter is zero. The first thing inside your bucket, if you have multiple things inside your bucket, that's slot zero. Yes, you can have multiple things inside a variable. We're not going to do that in this class, but just know that it's slot zero. Slot one is actually the second thing you could possibly have. So that plus one is just to get around the crazy funky math that we have to do. And of course, because, you know, we're going to make ourselves, you know, put this out into a string. Let's, you know, string, you know, dice one S is equal to, you know, a two string, you know, dice one, because we already know how to do that. We've already done that before. So, now if we were to go and say, you know, C out, okay, brand dice is, slash T, and then I will just go and add this over here, dice1s, because I want the string version, so that the string version actually works. And then I'll do another slash n slash n, just for prettiness. There we go. Whoops, that was not a slash. So now, all in this, we've got ourselves a randomized number, and we're going to put it inside dice1, and then we're going to convert it into a string so that it actually will show up. So, let's do that. Hit interactive, and dice1s was not... What do you mean it was not declared? Okay, string dice1. You know what, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do dice1s. Let's see if that works. Did I screw up the two string? Let's try it again. Let's see if that's what it needed. Nope. Dice 1S was not declared. Did you mean dice 1? No, that's not what I meant. Okay, you know what? I might have typed something slightly wrong. So let me just do str here. Underscore str here. And uh, underscore str here. Execute that. Error on line 15 was not declared in this scope. There must be something wrong with the two string. Let me take a look at it for a moment. Two string dice one. You know what? How I said maybe I needed to add this guy in. Let me just make sure I have to add this guy in. Include, convert, dlib. So, basically, convert the double library. Convert string to double lib. Let's try this now. Is that what the error was? No, it is not. What is wrong? Oh! Oh! Here's the actual error. I didn't put a freaking semicolon. Oh, gee, yeah, randomly works now. <laughs> so, yes, no, show. I'm going to leave that error in there just to show everyone. Remember to put semicolons at the end of your little sentences that you put here. I was so busy talking about the math behind it, I forgot to put a semicolon. But, hey, now you also know that this is including converting double, uh, li the converting double library, string to double. But 
I execute this, it's going to be 2. I execute this again, it's going to be 2. I'm going to execute it a third time, guess what? It's going to be 2. So, here's what randomness actually is. Randomness is a seed. And right now, uh, for those of you that are uh, that play uh, video games, you know what a seed is, right? It's uh, the, the items and locations are in different spots. Well, basically, the randomness is in a different spot. And that randomness resets back to zero every single time it turns off and then turns on again. So when I turn this off, it's off, it stopped. But when I start it again, it's starting at the exact same spot. So it's always starting at time zero. This is seed zero. And for seed zero, it's going to be a two forever. The first seed is always a two. So I never move on to seed one, seed two, seed three, seed four, seed five. It always is the same. So whenever you hear someone say there's no such thing as a random number generator, they are correct. It is not actually random at all. It will always be the same numbers in the exact same order. It will appear random, but it's not. So that's why I'm including time, because I'm going to change that. Because I don't want to always start on seed zero. Because that means I'm always going to get a two for my first roll. So I'll tell you what, whoops. So what I'm going to do here now is now we're going to use dice two. And dice two is going to be different, okay? I'm going to use S rand time zero. Okay? Now, what does that mean? That means I have now used the time. I have used time to set the seed. So whatever time my internal clock is at, that's now seed zero. And it's going to change and switch and do whatever. Okay? So if I'm at 3 o'clock, I'm going to get a different seed than if I'm at 3.01. If I'm going to get a different seed if I'm at 3.02 so on and so forth. Every single millisecond, every frame that this counts down in seed it in time is going to give us a different seed. So now, now we're going to get ourselves a different thing. So our random seed, so my, to set the random seed. I'm going to make sure you guys know that it's a random seed. So now dice two is going to equal that funky little math thing that I did. Rand, you know, modular division six plus one, and remembering my semicolon there. So now I'm going to do string dice two str. I could probably be able to go with the two string here because that was not the error at all. I'm oh, sorry, dice two semicolon. So now if I go in here and, you know, see out, I'll put the srand dice is colon slash tab. And then I'll put a plus dice to str plus and just for sake of making it look pretty, slash n, slash n, and remembering semicolon, and just for giggles, return zero, even though it's not going to actually return zero. So, first dice is a two, second dice is a three. I'm going to execute this again. Second dice is a five. See, it changed. Oops, I forgot a line. I forgot to tell people that we were using a second dice. So let's go with C out. Let's make them sure they know the difference. C out. Uh, second dice is the S rand dice. Slash N. There we go. So as you can see, that first dice is always going to be a 2. But this second dice could be something else. See, it was a three. 
This time it was another three. But this time it was a six. It's random. But I only have six choices, so obviously it's going to be differently randomized no matter what. So, this is more random than just the simple random function, okay? So, we've now used randomness two different ways in this program. Reiterated how to convert a string into an integer, uh, integer into a string and use it in a, in a sentence. You know, we stored some things there. We, we included some time dot time, and I'm really not sure if we need this line. I could probably just delete it, and it'll probably work. But, you know, just for the sake of it, you also now know, yeah, it works still perfectly fine. But you also now had a, you knew what a converting string to double and all that sort of fun stuff, that library exists. And, uh, yeah. So, that's it for the random dice game. Save it, continue it, uh, you know, submit it through. Next week, we're going to go on the big project. So, all these previous four videos, you're going to use the information you've learned in them in order to create your next program. Okay? And there's not going to be a step-by-step -step video. You're going to be able to do it on your own. So I guarantee you, everything I've done in these past four videos is used in some way. Okay? I'm not going to shoot. There's nothing that's new in that big project. So, and you got a whole week to do it.